everyone, and thank you for joining me here at the Seeds of Transformation podcast, where I have a special guest with me, Mache Johnson. Mache, would you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, I'd love to. So again, my name is Mache Johnson. I am, oh goodness, a lot of things. I am a Christian. I, I am a licensed minister of the gospel. I, um, goodness, I work in human services. I uh, am a newly certified life coach. And so, yeah, I do a lot of different things. I'm a wife, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm an aunt, I'm a friend, and I just love people and I love you. So excited <laughs> to be here uh, and doing this together. I also host uh, a podcast called The Bought Lesson. So yeah, just doing whatever I can to serve the Lord and um, and just live my little sweet, abundant life. So that's who I am. Awesome. Awesome. I've known Mache for quite a while. Uh, her and my sister grew up together and just being around my sister, of course, Mache. And then I saw Mache's podcast, The Bought Lesson. I listened to a couple of the podcasts. I said, I got to have you on. I mean, your podcast and what you're sharing with everyone, The Bought Lesson. I, I said, okay, there, there's something there, Lord. And then even before that, I was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, show me who I need to speak to about, um, I have a new book coming up, releasing in May. It's Exodus to Unity, Bridging the Gap Between the Traditional Christians and Millennials. I said, who can I speak to about these topics that you've given me to share with with the people? And Mache popped up, the the your, the bought lesson popped up. And I said, okay, Lord, this is what we're doing. This is where we're going. So our topic today is bridging the gap with understanding. And Mache herself is a millennial. And I wanted to speak with you not only because you are, but also because of the bought lesson. I really want to tie that in because I want people to get connected with your podcast because you have a lot of God-given wisdom to share. So with bridging the gap in understanding, um, even in our previous conversations prior to this, we've both shared and discussed how we may have felt ill-equipped, um, maybe ill-equipped in what God has given us to do, ill-equipped in our daily lives, ill-equipped in our family. So my question to you is how did it impact your ability to tackle what it is that you needed to do? Yeah, that's a great question. I think for me, um, feeling ill-equipped, it really just hindered me from making a move. I'm just going to be very honest. I I uh, grew up in a home where perfection was pretty much the expectation. That was the norm. And so for me, I felt like things had to be in line. Everything had to be right. Everything had to be perfect in order for me to actually progress forward. So when I felt ill-equipped, of course, I felt very, very stagnant. Mm. Um, and part of it was me just feeling that way within myself, but also it was kind of tied into the way I thought things should be. Mm -hmm. So if I'm ill-equipped, that means that I don't have any qualification and I really don't need to be putting things out there to the public or um, all of those things. So that that is probably the biggest way in which Ill being ill-equipped has impacted me is just that it has really halted my ability to move or it has halted my feelings of readiness and ability to move. Yes, yes. I know with me personally feeling ill-equipped, and I think it's something that we all face. We all have been in this walk. And you you mentioned something about making a move. And if God has given us this thing to do, we need to know and understand that with him giving it to us, we have everything we need. We are equipped. And I think that's a, a tactic of the enemy to make us feel or to try to say in some way, form or fashion that you're not good enough. You don't have what you need. You need this. You're not ready yet. But God says to move. When he says move, we need to be ready to move. Yes. So, um, yeah, he's given it to us, making a move. We just need to make a move. 
Um, my thing with being ill-equipped was um, connected to, I feel like, procrastination. Mm -hmm. And I heard this a little while ago, maybe a few months ago, that procrast procrastination, excuse me, is like saying that God owes you <laughs> another time or another moment, another season that you just spoke about moving, you know, making a move, uh, also aligning with procrastination. So in the moments of procrastination, if you've ever felt that way, how do you typically feel? Um, and what are the strategies that you may have taken on that you employ to overcome this tendency of, of procrastination? Yeah, awesome question and awesome tie-in. I think that I, well, I agree. I think that procrastination certainly ties directly into feeling ill-equipped because even with my wording, you know, per se, with regards to feeling like I, I'm halted or hindered from my ability to move, mm -hmm. that's exactly what it leads to is procrastination. And so if I don't feel prepared, then I'm not doing anything to get prepared. So when it comes to procrastination, um, Honestly, my my resolution is action and accountability. Okay. It just is. It, it's as simple as that. For me, I know that I have a tendency, if I feel ill-equipped and it starts leading towards procrastination, I'm very much <laughs> more prone to keep those things to myself. I'm not prone to go and seek accountability, yes. right? Yes. So, so for me, a way to overcome that is saying things out loud, especially to close friends and family um, who I know will check me about it, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. uh, even, even with me relaunching my podcast, it's been a long time since I've um, released an episode and things like that. So even with me coming back into it, mm -hmm. I received accountability from a friend of mine who uh -huh. Had spoken to about using her voice and talking to me about using my podcast as a platform to practice using her voice. Oh, and of course, at the same time, God was also, he's been telling me like, you have to relaunch, you have to relaunch. Um, in January, 2024, I knew that was going to be like my deadline. It, it was as if the Lord was like, you better put something out and you better start getting this thing going by January, 2024. And I'm not playing with you. Like, okay. right? <laughs> That's kind of how I felt. And then even as I was being vocal about just this call, um, because I started saying that I was going to relaunch my podcast a while ago. I started saying it. Uh -huh. Then um, I, I work for a nonprofit organization and one of the former alumni of the program that we host, mm -hmm. um, she has had listened to my podcast and she told me, she said, hey, when are you going to come out with another episode? Like we yeah. need more. And I'm like, girl, did anybody tell me? <laughs> Like, like sometimes you I need to even hear that. But even when when it's out there and when you have people around you, um, there are ways for you to be held accountable by the people in yeah. your life. So for me, that's one way um that I've been able to overcome procrastination in, in various areas and, and ways in which I find myself being able to uh seek out resources to help me, right? Yeah. Um I realize that a lot of times life situations cause me to procrastinate. I feel like mm -hmm. other things are a priority, you know, is, especially even day-to-day -day living uh, can sometimes seem to be more of a priority than more purposeful things or whatever it is. But seeking accountability through people who I know love me enough to challenge me, they aren't afraid to check me when I'm wrong or when I'm not moving, um, that helps. And then I would also say, again, along with people knowing and me giving other people permission to hold me accountable, it has to, like action has to accompany that. There's yeah. no way that I'm going to allow the people in my life who love me and whom I trust um, to keep on saying to me, you need to do this, you need to do that, yeah. and then I move on it. It's just not likely that it's going to be that way. So I think with procrastination, huge keys, hmm. not just for me, but I think this can be relevant for anybody, yeah. is accountability and action, period. Yeah. Yes, it, it it almost it 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 does align with what the word of God says that faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. Because again, if he's given you that to do, and we are all in this, we're all in this big pot. I feel like right now together that um if he's given that thing to you to do and you don't have the faith, 
he's going to give us everything we need to to do what we need to do to prosper and to succeed. I'm so excited for you relaunching and I'm I'm excited for the accountability in your life with the friends and the family, the people you've been able to speak to. Um and sometimes I think we some of some of us feel that we may not have that support system. Um but we do. There's somebody out there even listening to this podcast. This I would say would be we Michelle and I are now your accountability partners. <laughs> Because of this podcast, because of this discussion, um, and still along with this, has there been a specific instance for you where you felt like the procrastination or the feeling of uh, ill-equipped um, hindered your performance? Um, and what lessons would you say can be learned to better prepare for similar situations in the future or to help someone listening or watching today? For sure. I think that um, there's always a specific instance, right? Okay. (laughs) Um, Always, always, always. So I think back to years ago um, Mm -hmm. when I was really coming face to face with the idea that I was a procrastinator. Oh, okay. And so okay, I can stop, stop right there. You yes. came, you came to the idea that you were a procrastinator. Procrastinator. A lot of us don't. They w- we would never look at ourselves as pro- a, a procrastinator. I love that. Yeah. Please continue. So you saw yes. that in yourself. That that oh, takes absolutely. a lot to look at yourself and see that that I am procrastinating. Yeah. Yes. That's good. That's good. That's yes. really good. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to be very honest. It was actually your sister who helped me realize it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it was, so we were in college and yeah. I was always a pretty good student. And uh-huh. um, and so I didn't really have to study very much because okay. it, school wasn't really that challenging for me. I was able to still do what I needed to do without a whole lot of effort. Not that I didn't put in any effort at all, but when I got to college, I realized, hmm, I don't really have good study strategies. <laughs> I don't really know how to study. And I always waited till the last minute to do an assignment. I would push things off, even though I had plenty of time to prepare, I wouldn't take advantage of that time that I had to prepare. And what I noticed is that, especially, you know, as a college freshman, you're enjoying your college experience. Everybody's hanging out. You're meeting new people. Uh-huh. That And I was just soaking it all up. I enjoyed my college experience. And then I realized that my grades started to dwindle a little bit. Uh-huh. And I just remember thinking, like, how is it um, that other people are handling their business? <laughs> but we're all hanging out together. Yeah. We're all I'm hanging out with the same people, but they're getting their work done and I wasn't. And I realized it was because I was just putting it off until the end. And so it started to affect my performance, even academically, which that's an area I don't play with. And it's an area that even growing up, my parents didn't play about it. So I couldn't. And so even being in classes that didn't seem to be rocket science as a freshman, of course, like none of your classes are really rocket science for me. Uh-huh. at least. Uh-huh. And, and so knowing that I was starting to get C's in classes simply because I just wasn't doing my work. I was hanging out. I was spending time with people and I was procrastinating. That hit me like a ton of bricks. Wow. When I thought that I was going to just be able to do things at the last minute, I realized, whoa, there's way more prep that needs to go into this than what I have time for. Mm -hmm. And for me to just do an assignment haphazardly, that still wasn't my thing. Even if I'd wait until the last minute, it would still be quality work. Well, I wasn't producing quality work. Quality work. Wow. Yeah. And so that for me was... (laughs) what was used uh, to let me know, like, I am a procrastinator. I just am. I just am. And I hated it. um, But I thought that it would be easy to overcome. It wasn't. (laughs) 
I still procrastinate. I, like I have a tendency to still procrastinate. It, right. So that's how I know that accountability and action work because yeah. I battled this for years, <laughs> for years. And that's why I also know my bad habit is to, because I'm ashamed of it, the bad habit is that I tend to avoid accountability, uh -huh. right? So that I can continue to wallow in this procrastination or whatever it might be. But I've also seen over years, mm. over years, oh, time yeah. does not stop. It does not slow down. There oh. were things that I felt like God was telling me to do in my 20s that I just didn't do. And a lot of it was fear and just feelings of being ill-equipped and feeling inadequate and all these things. But goodness grief, I could have built up the skill set by now. <laughs> And I didn't. And so now here I am almost 40 and I'm realizing if I don't take accountability for my own actions, okay. if I don't seek out active accountability, if I don't take action, even small actions, then I'm going to be 60 and still thinking about what I should have done in my twenties. Are you kidding me? No, thank you. <laughs> No, thank you. Um, and I don't think that that pleases God. I don't think that that's me stewarding my gifts well. I don't think that that's me um, being a good steward of, of what's been given to me. And so so for me, this is just a season of the wake up call, honestly. And and I'm digging into accountability more. I'm digging into action more, despite still, because the feelings of inadequacy don't always just go away. You know, the feelings of being ill-equipped don't just go away. There, there are things now, even with the relaunch and kind of moving into video podcasting as opposed to just audio, there are still some things that I feel very ill-equipped about and I don't feel as knowledgeable about. But I'm like, I'm only going to learn if I actually take action. Yes. What I refuse to do is let procrastination and those feelings of being ill-equipped hinder me now because I know what they can do. I've lived quite a few years knowing what they can do. Yeah. So now I can at least build a little bit of strategy to overcome that and still push through despite those things. Ooh. Girl, I feel like we need to have a, a altar call. <laughs> or, I mean, it's just, it's, it's so much to make us feel these feelings of procrastination, yeah. being ill-equipped. Um, and again, God has given us everything we need. This is a lot. And this is something that even my own self, I'm going to go back and listen to because you gave us so much. God has given you the bought lesson. And in this, you've given us so much. And I'm, I'm very, very grateful for you joining me today, Mache. Um, I'm so grateful for the seed of transformation that you've sown for both of us, our viewers and our listeners. And I'm grateful that you noticed that you were a procrastinator. I'm grateful for my sister, Alana, you know, pointing that out. Alana will, will point some stuff out. She's pointed several things out to me being yeah. the older sister. I'm like, well, excuse me, I'm the oldest. What are you talking about? So I'm, yeah. I'm really grateful for the accountability partners, our friends, our families, our co-workers, all of those things. Um, and again, for this time that you have spent with us today for this topic of bridging the gap with understanding. Because if we are to bridge the gap between traditional Christians and millennials, this is a part of it, understanding. And it's not just understanding one side, one way, but there's so much involved in understanding. I just really hope to shed a different light for everyone in bridging gaps, in our understanding, in our knowledge, in our wisdom, and to move when God says move. Uh, Mache, if you don't mind, would you close us out in prayer, please? I'd love to. I'd love to. Thank you. Absolutely. Father in heaven, in the name of your sweet son, Jesus, we are so grateful that you love us enough to bring things to the forefront of our minds. The things that we struggle with, the things that make life hard, but also the things that can make life a little less hard. Thank you, Lord, for people in our lives who hold us accountable 
even through their own example. Sometimes it's not even words that are spoken. It's just being able to see how other people live their lives that call us to desire to be accountable, that cause us to want to uh, put ourselves in positions where we do feel more confident in our ability to move forward. So Father, I pray for myself and my sister Alma and everyone who is listening to this podcast, Lord, just praying that you would help us see the resources that you've put in our faces to help us. I pray that you would help us acknowledge that we can always come to you, whether we're on the mountaintop or in the valley, you, Lord, will be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path all the way through. And so we thank you, Lord, for being with us. We ask that you would put us in position to do the things that please you, to live the abundant life that you've called us to. Um, and Lord, we just thank you that we know that if we can't trust anyone else, we can trust you to get glory out of our lives and to do what is good and to make all things work together for our good. So Father, we thank you and we bless you for this time and ask that you would help us to move forward towards you always towards you and never away from you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Mache. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out there right now. Would you mind coming back and joining us again here at the Caesar Transformation Podcast? It would be my pleasure. Yes, it would be oh my, my pleasure. Gosh. Yeah, your wisdom, what God has given you is just awesome. I love your spirit. Um it's just it's amazing. So I would love for you to join us again here real, real soon. And I would love to continue this conversation on not only bridging gap, uh, bridging the gap with understanding, but there was something in your last podcast, grace and discipline. Mm -hmm. So I would love to touch on that. Yes. Uh, so you guys join us back here again at the Seas of Transformation podcast. Um, and what we're going to talk about grace and discipline with Mache. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.